This is your local election headquarters. Welcome back to This Week in Louisiana Politics. I'm joined in studio, in person, by Congressman Garrett Graves, Republican from Louisiana. Thanks for coming to the show. Hey, great to be back with you. Okay, so we're going to talk about something very important, some very important work you've been doing for yeah. the last couple of years, and that would be expanding, this is very important to Louisiana, yeah. expanding veteran services. That's hit a snag recently. Tell us what happened. Yeah, uh, so look, we, we have been working to try to do a couple different things. Number one, uh, keep in mind you have a big veteran population in this region. Uh, there are two VA clinics that are adjacent to each other, and but they're separate. And so what we were trying to do is we're trying to solve a number of problems. One, put everything in one building, don't make it two separate clinics. Number two, expand the services that are available there to where our veterans don't have to drive all the way down to New Orleans increasingly to get uh, help, to get assistance, to see a doctor. And, and things have been moving well. We, we were able to secure funding. We had to change the law to uh, break this little technical log jam, but we had done all that. And so everything was moving forward. They had put out a request for proposals and a number of submissions were turned in. Well, what happened is the same thing we've seen happen with our big flood control projects, with our highway projects and everything else, is that the cost, just like we see at the grocery store, cost costs yeah. have, have, have increased significantly. So what the VA did, rather than saying, okay, well, we're just gonna get some more money or we're gonna figure out how to, how to revise this and make it more efficient, what they've done is they've basically taken the last 16 VA clinics around the country and just press pause on them. And so unfortunately, because ours is one of the newer clinics that's gonna be established, uh, they press pause on it. Uh, what's so frustrating is that a couple of years ago, we anticipated exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. And so we, we highlighted it to them. We told them, we thought that they were being too restricted with their criteria, that they were gonna end up running into cost problems as we've seen many of these other projects. And it's exactly what's happened. The U.S. government didn't plan well. That's just a, that's a shock. It is uh, <laughs> absolutely shocking. But 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 the thing that's most frustrating is that all of this is this is what inflation looks like, mm -hmm. and it was all self-imposed. You can't go out there and go spend trillions and trillions of dollars and not expect there to be inflation like we're seeing right now affecting families all across the country. Yeah, in, in your press release you said uh, years ago the Baton Rouge uh, VA clinic was identified um, by the VA as one of the nation's most urgently needed facility expansions. So it's got to be heartbreaking to see that stop. Well, and it goes back to our point. So why are you taking the last 16 on the list and just saying we're going to we're going to press pause on all these as opposed to truly following what you have even identified as being the most urgent, the ones that are, are most needed and, and make sure that this one stays up to the top. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get VA to rearrange their order. Sort of create a, a triage situation. That's exactly right. Yeah. So what's next? Well, what's next is, is again, first we're going to be meeting with the VA. We've already sent them a letter. Uh, I had a meeting with the secretary on this already, but going to be meeting with them to see if we can get them to raise the priority of that clinic and deprioritize some of these others that won't be as impactful. Um, and if we're unable to get them to do that, we're gonna be working on additional funding to try and get that backlog list or that list of pause projects around the country moving again. Um, the third thing that we're working on is trying to get them to really think through their criteria a little bit differently and seeing if we possibly can squeeze another clinic or two into the process with existing dollars. You'd call this a betrayal of veterans trust what, what would you like to tell veterans now look uh, bottom line is is you have people who literally were willing to put it all on the line they were willing to to put their their entire lives on the line for this country for our citizens for our freedoms for our Constitution this is not how you treat people who who have that have put that kind of sacrifice toward complete strangers mm -hmm. and and so what's so frustrating is that you know this technical glitch that held this project up for a few years we, we believe that the the VA could have fixed it themselves. They were unwilling to do that, so we had to change the law. All of the obstacles we've been able to overcome, the least th that you could do is to make sure that the clinics you've identified as the most urgent in the country are gonna move forward, not stopping. So the lesson here is plan better, know that costs are going to go up over the next couple of years, and, and, and plan it out. Right? Look, I mean, uh, the Comet Flood Protection Project you and I have talked about in the yes. past, that project has nearly tripled in cost right. over the past few years. And so how the VA couldn't have anticipated this based upon their own actions as well as, well as what we're seeing in, in inflation rates right now is, is 
just inexcusable. There you have it. All right, Congressman Gary Graves, thanks, thanks for stopping Thank by. You. Good luck. We'll be keeping an eye on that progress as Thank well. You. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back.